The Frog Boys were five young boys all aged between 9 and 13 that went missing in Daegu, South Korea. It took almost a decade for their bodies to be found in a location that has been searched dozens and dozens of times by numerous volunteers. So what happened? How did these five boys mysteriously vanish only for their remains to be found 10 years later in an area that thousands of individuals and volunteers already thoroughly searched? Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another international true crime video. Today we are going to be covering the Frog Boys, one of the most craziest and bizarre cases that's ever happened in South Korea. And frankly, super sad because it happened to five children, very, very young, extremely heartbreaking, and the story just absolutely broke me. Um, just finding out like what the parents had to go through and just the pure neglect that the police officers in this case had on the investigation. But we're just going to jump right into it. So this case happened on March 26, 1991. So this day was a public holiday due to the upcoming regional elections. So at the time, everything was pretty much closed. Like the schools were closed, people were staying home. It was basically recognized as a national holiday. So in this case, there are five boys that were involved. Wu Cha Won, age 13, Jo Ho Young, age 12, Kim Young Gyu, age 11, Park Chang In, age 10, and Kim Jong Sik, age 9. I apologize ahead of time if I butchered any of those names. Feel free to correct me down below as always. But they all attended the same elementary school and they all lived pretty much close to each other. They would oftentimes hang out a lot. They were basically brothers. They stayed as a pack together. As well as they all did Taekwondo together. They were all enrolled in Taekwondo Academy. And essentially they all just had a really strong bond with one another. So all the children basically had a day off and they decided to play with each other so previously they were actually just around the neighborhood until one of the neighbors yelled at them pretty much saying that they were like starting to cause a ruckus so they decided to kind of go into their location in a mountain called mount warrior the kids they really enjoyed collecting salamander eggs and this is kind of where the name frog boys kind of went about um they weren't searching for frog eggs or frogs it was salamander eggs actually but it wasn't really like as common as people thought it was. So the name Frog Boys kind of just sticked. But anyways, the last time that Chon Wong's father actually saw him was when he was running to grab a thicker jacket, only saying that he was going to play outside. It wasn't until the afternoon that Chon Wong's father, Wong Jung Woo, realized that his son and his friends were missing when he received a call from the Taekwondo Academy, basically saying that Chon Wong didn't show up for his class. And this was just very weird to the father, uh, considering the fact that his son never missed the single day of Taekwondo practice. So then he called up the other parents and they too confirmed that their sons were also missing. So they found this extremely odd and they decided to basically go out looking for them. So at this point, they all pretty much gathered together and they were kind of just frantically trying to look for where their son could possibly be. It wasn't until one of the kid's friends actually provided some information as to where they could be, which is Mount Waryong, and he told them that they were basically like looking for salamander eggs. So previously, there was actually going to be six kids that were going to go collect salamander eggs, but one of them actually decided to stay behind because they didn't eat breakfast. So the parents go to the mountain to basically search for their kids and they search all through the night until it really just started getting dark and they had absolutely no luck in finding their kids. So as the night passed, they just weren't having luck. They couldn't find their son anywhere. They were nowhere to be seen. Um, they decided to go to the police and alert them. So initially, the police actually did not take this case very seriously and they did not take what the parents were saying very seriously they actually they were basically saying oh your kids probably just ran away you know it's very common they'll be back um and obviously we all know this is not to be true the first 24 to 48 hours of a kid disappearing is vital it just absolutely decreases the chances of finding them after those 48 hours so those 48 hours are extremely crucial and i guess this just didn't click in their head or I don't know if they knew this information prior but they kind of just like shrug it off saying that they'll be back you know they just ran away and they did very little to kind of like ease the parents 
parents' anxiety. So at this point, the parents were absolutely starting to get restless and they just felt like, like they couldn't count on the police officers just because they weren't taking this matter very seriously. So they decided to take the matter onto their own hands. They contacted a bunch of journalists, some news reporters, and basically just had their boys' names plastered everywhere. And I mean like everywhere. This was like in major headlines uh, back in the days and it just absolutely worked. A lot of people were starting to get involved in the case. Thousands and thousands of people contributed to the parents and was just giving like their utmost support. But along the way, they also did get a bunch of nasty ass people. So not long after the first broadcast, one of the families got a call from an anonymous man who claimed to be holding the children captive, elaborating with they are all suffering and two are very ill. He demanded a high amount of ransom for the children which the parents readily agreed to and they were all to meet at a train station. The man had told them to go and wait and so that's what they did. They waited and waited and waited and guess what? No one showed up. And the families just realized that this was just all a twisted prank. So this is absolutely disgusting. Like imagine doing this to a bunch of grieving parents who are already having crazy anxiety trying to find out where their kids are. Like what kind of human being does that? So as the case kind of goes on and progresses and as the case started getting a lot more traction with the media and with thousands and thousands and thousands of people, this is when the police really started getting involved. But they were still treating the case as if like it was a runaway case. And I just want to applaud the parents because they weren't going to take the shit from the police officers. No, 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 no. They weren't going to take any of it. And being the great parents that they are, they went to the same news broadcasters, the same journalists, and basically told them that the authorities just wanted to wrap up this case really quickly that they didn't really care about it and they're not taking it as seriously as they should be. And this wasn't just a harmless laziness on the part of the police. There's a reason why we have Amber Alerts now. The longer a kidnapped or missing child is away, the harder and harder it becomes to find them. And even if they were runaways, children who run away from home and aren't found are at exponentially higher risk for things like human trafficking. So the lack of response wasn't just annoying, it was just plain out disturbing. In a later interview, the father of Park Chang In would say, we, the parents, meant nothing to the police. But with the grievances now aired on national television, the police were finally called out on their shit. And this is the point where they really started putting in a lot of effort in finding these five boys. So it wasn't until shortly after that another sick ass person would go and torment the families by pretending to be one of the boys. So the boy pretended that he was Jong Sik, um, and the mother even heard this and confirmed that it was him, but it was later revealed that this was all fake and it was just another prank yet again. So the parents just could not catch a break, you know? Like, a lot of people were taking this very seriously and a lot of people did care, but there are that very handful amount of people out there that just have no hearts or no remorse at all. So at this point, even the president at the time started taking notice of this case. And it was actually him who came out and called for a further investigation into the disappearance. So hundreds of thousands of volunteers and police personnel descended onto Mount Voryong going through the foliages in rank and file, ensuring that no area was overlooked. And this wasn't just like a few thousands, guys. 300,000 people and police officers volunteered or were kind of placed if that's their job there to search for the missing boys and a reward was posted for 42 million won which equivalents to about $32,000 for the safe return of the boys and this was all pulled together by the community which was extremely extremely generous of everyone who donated as well as schools throughout the whole entire country. But even at this point and with the time that has passed by, there was just no luck in finding the missing boys. And eventually years passed by and they just weren't getting any luck and the, the case was just going dry. Not as many people were really following the case anymore, but the parents were very strong-willed and they were gonna do whatever it took to bring back their boys. And this is where it really starts taking a twist and turn on the parents because at this point they have gone through years and years of 
devastating news and tireless nights of just trying to find their boys. A lot of them even quit their jobs to really make this their full-time mission and they even rented a small van with the images of the boys plastered on the side and the phrase please help find our missing children. So they drove this truck throughout the country attempting to drum up any extra support or information that possibly could come up and at this point a lot of the fathers were just not taking care of their health. Some of them resorted into drinking a lot of alcohol. Um, one of them even was addicted to sleeping pills. And the person that was kind of assigned to this case decided to stick around just because they saw what this case really meant to the fathers. So as the parents started traveling throughout the country, they were doing press conference, they were talking to journalists, they were talking to news reporters. And it wasn't long before the fathers began to notice something very odd at their press conference. So they had grown familiar to what a reporter looked like. So when people begin to appear at the meetings and taking notes they questioned them and there was this one man in particular who they were kind of like iffy about so one of the fathers actually decided after the press conference to ask what this guy's deal is like why does he keep showing up to all these press conferences and the man handed him a business card with his name on it and so after questioning the strange man and asking around they discovered that this guy was actually from the intelligence agency and for whatever reason they had started keeping tabs on the families of the missing frog boys even showing up at their houses to question them and track every movement that they made like they knew the schedule of these parents from day to night and it was just extremely disturbing and frankly really creepy but they claimed that they were just there to simply protect the families which the families highly doubted this especially as evidence started to point towards the military base on Mount Warriong. So obviously there were a lot of conspiracies as to where the boys could have been. A lot of people thought that they could have possibly gotten kidnapped. Um, at the time there's this myth going around of leapers. So leapers are actually people who think that if they eat the kids livers that they could miraculously be cured of whatever disease that they have. There were people who thought they were <laughs> abducted by aliens. Aliens. But there's one theory out there that a lot of people from the true crime community kind of like lean on and that is the military base located in Mount Boryong. So this military base was actually really close to where the boys were known to kind of be playing around and the military base during this case was briefly searched during the process of combing out Mount Boryong but the police had refused to question anyone in relation to it and one of the boy's friends actually claimed that he heard a gunshot and scream and during this time the police kind of just shrugged this off and thought that the boy kind of just was saying it just to say it and it was actually confirmed years later when the boy was all grown up they asked him again like oh were you telling the truth during when you were younger on like hearing a gunshot and hearing a scream and he confirmed that he was telling the truth but at the time the police didn't believe him and they thought that this was just some crazy rumor so three years have passed by and a lot of the families actually had to go into debt just because a lot of the fathers weren't working they were making this their full-time mission to find their boys so they had to return back to life and back to working but they didn't give up they were still contacting news reporters but at this point a lot of the news reporters were actually declining their calls just because this news news was starting to get really old and it was no longer relevant and even when the parents went there in person they were escorted out by the news reporters so the answer was painfully obvious interest had all but completely faded due to no new information or events to keep the story alive so with debts piling up and families still to look after they had no choice but to try and move on from one of the worst things a parent could face. So two years after returning to work in a semblance of normalcy, a sickening accusation drew media attention yet again. So a criminal psychologist who had studied in the United States claimed that the children were all buried under one of the parents' houses. Um, so the parent that he's referring to here is John Sick. Just because he wasn't able to account for three hours during the day of the boy's disappearance. And obviously, obviously he wasn't the culprit he was searching for his kid he was just as devastated as the other parents so this accusation was just absolutely 
embarrassing but at this point i feel like people just needed someone to blame and take accountability of the disappearance of these kids and the psychologist was a very respected man and he was very credible in the united states so they did search jong sik's house and they actually found a pair of children's shoes which is okay it's a pair of children's shoes like he had kids so like why is that weird? So the police shortly after this suddenly perked up and latched onto the theory. So they basically demolished the father's house with an excavator, searching for remains that just weren't there. And after finding this out, the psychologist actually started running away. And the crowd that was there was actually just furious. They started chasing the psychologist around and basically was like, oh, get him, get him, he's running away, get him. And eventually he was taken to the police station for his safety, but... Obviously, he was wrong. And this wasn't the only bad thing to happen to the fathers. Another father would eventually also be diagnosed with liver cancer and pass away from it five years later. And one of the fathers even stated that I think he became sick because of the exhaustion of searching for his missing son. His body gave out under distress while he was only in his 40s. But one year later, this case actually had its big break when the remains of the five boys were actually finally found. So on September 26, 2002, two hikers who had been foraging around for acorns actually stumbled upon clothing partly hidden in the undergrowth. They realized that they looked suspiciously childlike and upon further inspection they saw the remains of the bodies. And so then they decided to call the authorities and get the authorities involved in this. So authorities were called and they quickly realized what they were seeing. It was the five frog boys and they were nothing more than skeletal remains and clothes tangled up together. So by the time the families arrived people were already gathered around to watch the proceedings the clothes of all five boys and the braces of actually one of the boys were found and positively identified by the family. And the shirt of one of the boys had been tied in front of him and this was extremely odd just because this was something that he would have never been able to do by himself. And not to mention his pants had been flipped over his shoulders after unknotting the shirts. And so as one of the parents went to go examine their kid, they actually found something that was extremely horrific. So after unknotting the shirt, empty cartilages and and unused bullets were actually found in one of the shirts and they found something that was quite odd something that didn't really add up and that was that the wounds on their skulls weren't consistent with the gunshot so if they had been shot the skull would have actually fractured and left behind bone fragments but none of that was actually found in the investigation and actually the corona and forensic analysis ruled that the most of the fractures seemed to have been caused by blunt force trauma probably with like a metal object such as a pipe or something but either way it was a Parent, the children had been through something absolutely horrific and the horrors just didn't stop there as forensic analysis arrived two to three hours later and was in profound disbelief at the mishandling in the case by the police's on scene. First of all, they didn't close off the area. That's why a lot of people were gathered around. They also were kind of like letting their parents touch the 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 skeletons um which obviously that could tamper with the evidence and it was all because at this point in history there was no system in south korea that made sure specialists were the ones who excavate remains and delicate crime scenes and it's plain to see why laws regarding that were actually put into place to stop incidences like this from occurring and the police has even used pickaxes to upturn the ground and organize the bodies by bone type rather than by whom the bones belong to to add insults to injury they asked the bereaved families to identify their missing children so all this made finding the cause of the death on bodies that were already falling apart made it nearly impossible and anything that could have been determined from the positioning of the bodies was lost and possible evidence may have been destroyed just because of the lack carelessness of the police officers that was on site but of course not that the authorities particularly cared in this instance but almost immediately the police decided that the five children had all died of exhaustion and hypothermia after getting lost in the rain. They theorized that they huddled together for warmth which explained why the bodies were tangled together before all of them dying in their sleep at the same time so without noticing the others were dead and moving away. So the family and the forensic analyst obviously disputed this claim just because of how unbelievable they were and their reasoning were. Not only that but the children had all grown up around Mount Poryong and knew it like the back 
back of their hands. There was absolutely no way, no way that they just had gotten lost and laid down to die. And even if they had somehow lost their way, the days of shouting their names in the woods would have gotten one of their attention. And this was even further proven when a separate team of experts from the Korea Alpine Federation arrived to weigh in on this matter. With their specialization obviously being in regions like Mount Boryong, they could offer valuable insight for cases like this and could help determine if this was all likely that the children had simply gotten lost. And they actually determined that there was no way that the boys could have actually died from natural cases, i.e. hypothermia. And according to the rescue team, Director Chong Wong So, the area isn't high up at all, it isn't even a hundred meters away from the streets, just use some common sense. And locals even pointed out that even if it was at night, the illuminated Daegu city was still visible from Mount Boryong and would have been an easy beacon for the children to follow. And if it really was cold and raining, it would have only taken five minutes for the boys to run back home. And this theory was further even more debunked because if the bones in fact were on top of the ground, the children's bodies would have rot or like nearby animals would have come and ripped up the body which means that their bones would have been separated but in fact the bones were indeed together. So this theory obviously didn't match up to the evidence that was provided so at this point there was only one reason that could possibly be true and that the kids were in fact murdered and later meticulously hidden. And not only that, but the bodies had been hidden in a depression in the ground, meaning that it was easier to hide them than on flat ground, where any suspiciously body-shaped lumps would have been easy to see. And so at this point, all the experts were in agreement. While they didn't know exactly what happened, it was not hypothermia. And the forensic experts could only put their faith in bodies that they had excavated themselves, not the ones that the police had thrown around. And luckily, were able to deduce enough evidence to confirm that it wasn't an accident despite on how suspiciously and callously the police were trying to claim it to be. Later analysis of the soil confirmed that the boys had died in that location, but then how were they not discovered? Had the bodies been moved there at a later date? So once again, suspicion started to turn to the military who confirmed that the bullets found in the boys' clothing were from its shooting ranges on Mount Boryong, but denied anything to do with the deaths. And they claimed that because of the public holiday on the day of the disappearance, they were no practice drills running, but they added a cryptic detail which is that the military officers could shoot on their own and there was indeed a commissioned officer at the shooting range to empty out ammo cartilages that he had. So this could also explain why there was extra ammunition cartilages that had been found near the crime scene, which the police had actually discarded as a coincidence rather than evidence. And the presence of ammunition a couple of hundred meters away from the shooting range wasn't common, but when found near the bodies of five murdered boys, it drew more than a few raised eyebrows. And so without any more evidence to go off of, and with the police investigation basically reaching an end due to the same recent speculation running wild, the most popular theory was that it was all a military cover-up after an accident gone horribly wrong and all the evidence seemed to pretty much support that. Maybe they had gone to collect bullet casings, inadvertently walking into a line of fire of a distracted officer and one of them had been shot. And maybe panicking, the officer may have taken out the rest of the children to hide his brutal mistake. Or maybe his superiors aided him in covering it up. Like, tell me, why else would a police be so willing to let the deaths of five children slide and refuse to investigate the only unofficial suspect that they had? And why else would military-issued bullets be found tied into the boy's shirt? And another popular theory that a lot of people actually believe in was that this was done by a psychopath or a mentally ill individual but one of the mountain terrain experts pointed out that, that there should have been other cases like this but there's never been a similar case either before or after but with no evidence to go off of the case went cold no official suspects were ever named on the case and with a 15-year statute of limitations approaching on the Frog Boys case, it seemed as if no one would ever be charged. And so a lawyer on behalf of the families filed three lawsuits against the police for mishandling the case, alleging that their blunders had caused five families closure and seemed more ill-intentioned than accidental. But the cases were all thrown out on the ground and the judges couldn't directly pin the blame on the police. So while their lawsuits may have been thrown out, the case of the Frog Boys had at least some positive lasting implications 
The statute of limitations for the first degree murder was removed, meaning the case could be potentially reopened if more evidence or suspects were to be found. And the fathers all still refused to give up and abandoned the case completely. So even with the bittersweet ending, at least the families were able to gather up some closure of their children. And so the parents actually had their boys cremated and spread across the Nakdong River. And one of the fathers even commented they died together, so we wanted them to play together in the afterlife. So obviously, a very heartbreaking story. My heart absolutely goes out to all the families out there who were affected by this. They had to suffer years and years of torment of the police officers, of the military base, and a selected amount of really heartless people. So obviously this case is unsolved and if there are any more further evidence that will resurface, I will definitely go ahead and cover that. But if you guys like this video and you guys want to see more international true crime, make sure you guys go hit that subscribe button down below and while you're at it please go hit that like button down below that would really help me out a lot i will definitely be posting more true crime videos and maybe some lifestyle videos some other videos that i want to do on this channel so definitely keep your eyes peeled out for that but with all of that being said guys i will see you guys next time bye guys